kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcasts at a kids company about. We are so glad you're listening to this show, and I wanted to let you know that we've got an entire network of podcasts dedicated to producing original content that talks up to kids, centers the things going on in their world, and engages and challenges how they see the world and themselves. With shows about facts, climate justice, current events, and activism, there's a show out there made just for your kid. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Hello, and welcome to 1.5, a kids podcast about climate justice. I'm Zanaji Artis. And I'm Olivia Greenspan. And this is 1.5, a show where we delve into the challenges facing our planet and the solutions to those challenges with scientists, youth activists, and other environmental leaders who have experienced the realities of the climate crisis firsthand. So far in this section on climate solutions, we've covered water-based solutions with Dr. Porcelli and indigenous sovereignty with Jake Spotted Wolf. This week, we are moving on to Earth, the land beneath our feet. Yes, this week on 1.5, we are speaking with geomorphologist Dr. David Montgomery. And a geomorphologist, if you're wondering, is a scientist who studies the physical features of the surface of the Earth, like soil. With Dr. Montgomery, we'll discuss how our land and soil is affected by the climate crisis and what we need to do about it. We'll answer questions like why the ground beneath our feet is so important to the impacts of climate change, how earthworms and microbes contribute to the health of our soil, and what chocolate cake can teach us about healthy soil. Mm -hmm. I love chocolate cake. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Okay, let's dig into this conversation with Dr. Montgomery. Web north beyond the pines. This stands the pebble mine on mountain of copper and gold. To get it out, they'll dig straight down a thousand feet below the ground, about as low as you can go. Just there for the taking. We had a thematic intro for you today, and that song was Pebble Mine by the band Big Dirt. Today, we're going to be talking about earth in reference to land and soil. And we would love to get into a conversation about why is the ground beneath our feet so important for the impacts of climate change? That's a really good question. Because, I mean, when we think about climate change and we think about, you know, us pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, our minds don't immediately go beneath our feet to think about the soil. You have to kind of think about the connections and understand them. But if you look at the total amount of carbon that's in the atmosphere... There's about twice as much in the world's soils. So the soil is a really large reservoir of carbon on this planet. You know, and of course, plants like the, the trees behind me are another big reservoir of carbon. Um, but there's an awful lot of carbon in the ground beneath our feet in the way in the form of soil organic matter, which is uh, basically a shorthand for dead stuff. Uh, plants that used to be alive that are now dead, an- the remains of animals. Um, and that organic matter is actually really important for feeding the life in the soil which helps to cycle nutrients. So there's a connection not only to the climate, which I'll get back to in a moment, but also to how we grow our food and how we nourish ourselves. Um, And the connection to the climate comes in because if you think about what, you know, nature actually evolved a very efficient system for pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. And it's called photosynthesis. It's what plants do to feed themselves. Um, and when plants capture carbon from the, in the form of CO2 from the atmosphere and build their bodies uh, that way, when they die, that carbon is still in their bodies, and that's where the carbon that's in the ground, that twice as much in the ground than is in the atmosphere, came from once living things. And so we can actually, if we manage our plants right and we manage our farms right, we can use farming to pull carbon from the atmosphere and park it below ground in a way that will build soil fertility. And so not only help reduce the climate impact of human activities, you know, our fossil fuel use in particular, but it could also help rebuild the fertility of the world's farmland, which will help us feed the world. 
So I'm excited about the potential for thinking about the connections between soils and climate and, and the health of societies because it's you know putting more carbon in the ground using certain farming practices and building the health of our soils really is a win-win for the climate and for people um, and for the environment as well because it can help us get off uh, use fewer agrochemicals. Now, that said, restoring the world's soils is not going to solve the climate problem, but it could be one step towards helping to do that. And it's, it's, a, it's one of those connections that most people don't think about because it's not that intuitive. You have to think about plants pulling carbon from the sky, sending uh, some of that carbon to leak out of their roots to feed microbes in the soil. Then when the plants die, the microbes recycle it. There's connections that we can study and learn and understand that can help us inform how we live on the world in a way that will help the land uh, make future generations of humanity more prosperous and healthy. Wow, that's all very interesting. And I think um, makes me think about all the different environments that we often think about. And you know, people pay attention to these large mammals and our oceans and savannas and all these things. But it really sounds like soil is like this really micro environment where there's so much different life happening that no one can even see and people don't really think about. And so that's really interesting. And if people are listening or like me as a kid, uh, I played outside a lot and I used to do lots of digging in the dirt, which was probably now I know probably soil. Um, but when you're digging, um, you might come across earthworms. And so we would love um, for you to share about why earthworms and all these other microbes and other organisms that are life in the soil, um, why are they important for the planet and life? That's a great question. Worms are these fascinating organisms. I mean, they, they seem really simple, right? And when we think about them, but they do an incredible amount of work because they essentially... Um, merge the the mineral matter and organic matter in their bodies as they ingest plant matter and and soil they'll merge that and so what comes out the back end of a worm is actually incredibly good fertilizer you can think of them as like, you know, like miniature cows that are out fertilizing the soil from the inside out through their manure uh, and Charles Darwin uh, called worms God's plowmen because they churned and worked the soil of England he calculated that the soils of England got sort of uh, passed through the body of a worm about once, you know, any particle in it about once every 100 or 200 years. So over long times, over geologic time frames. When Dr. Montgomery says geologic time, he's referring to a way of dating Earth's timeline in periods that can span many millions of years. Worms are essentially churning and mixing the soil and, and mixing that frontier between geology and biology and getting those minerals into circulation in the plant world so that they can then cycle on up to the animal world and the human world. So worms are part of that. In a way, they're part of the natural infrastructure of this planet. Infrastructure refers to things like roads, bridges, and buildings. So natural infrastructure refers to the structures that make up our natural world like soil, worms, and trees. That helps maintain the viability of life on the continents. And yet we think of them as these lowly life forms, you know, these, these um, but they're fascinating when you uh, look at what they actually do collectively. Individually, they're kind of boring, but uh, what they do is pretty cool and amazing when you integrate it. And they're only one example of the kind of life forms in the soil that do the kind of work, the heavy lifting of cycling nutrients, getting things like zinc that we need uh, in our bodies, and that's actually, uh, you know, an important micronutrient for bolstering our immune system. Something that's in, in particularly important today. More from our conversation with Dr. Montgomery after this quick break. Hey kids, my name's Matthew. I'm a teacher, a librarian, and I'm the host of A Kid's Book About, the podcast. What's a podcast? Great question. A podcast is a show that you listen to, usually on a smartphone or really any device that connects to the internet. You might even be listening to a podcast right now when you're hearing this ad. And at A Kid's Book About, we talk about the big things going on in your world. Every week we chat with authors from our award-winning A Kid's Book About series. A Kid's Book About what? Well, everything. Racism, disabilities, belonging, diversity. What about anxiety? Absolutely. Anything that's important to you is worth talking about. 
These are the things that are shaping your world, and our guests are people who've been there too. New episodes release every Monday. Find a kid's book about the podcast wherever podcasts are found. Hi, my name is Leo Abelo Perry, and I'm the host of The Activators, a kid's podcast about activism. On this podcast, we want to celebrate and amplify kids who are activating social change by doing what they love. We'll talk and learn from other kids who are doing incredible things to make our world a better place. We'll learn about different issues that need our attention. Things like gender equality, environmental justice, and food insecurity. And we'll hear some advice from kids, for kids, on how we can make a real difference in our world. So... To every kid who's listening right now, no matter if you're already an activator or you're just getting started, get up and do your superhero pose. All right, you ready? On three, we're all going to say activators in our superhero pose. One, two, three, activators! Welcome back to 1.5, a kid's podcast about climate justice. Let's return to our conversation with geomorphologist and musician, Dr. David Montgomery. Fungi in the soil uh, help get zinc out of the soil and into plants by forming partnerships with the root systems of plants, where the plants will trade uh, sugars, uh, carbon-rich compounds they make through photosynthesis. They'll trade those to, to fungi in exchange for minerals that the fungi mine out of the soils and connect their fungal hyphae, which is basically the roots of the fungus, they connect to plant roots, and there's a two-way trade. Uh, So there's all these symbiotic, mutually beneficial relationships in the soil that are happening that are out of sight and out of mind because we don't see in the soil. And a lot of it's happening with microbes that are invisible to our eyes. But if you look at the sort of the the plants and the pollinators in the garden behind me or the hummingbirds that may occasionally fly into the view here, those kind of symbioses between uh, pollinators and plants, we're all very well aware of. But we're not so aware of what's happening under the ground. But there's total parallels with what's happening in that hidden world of nature beneath our feet. It's just that we've only recently kind of unlocked the code and started to understand all the chemical signaling and the exchanges that allow soil life to benefit uh, the plants, um, including our major crops. Um, And that's how farming practices can actually influence soil fertility, soil health, and life as well. So in a way, you can think of soil as one of the last scientific frontiers where we're still learning and understanding all those connections between other life forms and ourselves. And some of our misconceptions in the fairly recent modern world have, have colored our farming practices in a way in ways that degrade the soil and its fertility over the long run. So it's an exciting area to go into. If people are interested in microbes and soils, you know, there's a great career to be had in that going forward because it's an incredibly important area. You too could be a geomorphologist. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Which would be a cool title. Also um, want to talk about things that kids can do. And so like wondering if there are ways for kids to explore the carbon levels in their local soils and also if they can learn about what the color of the soil can tell them about the soil health. The simplest metric for gauging soil health, it's, uh, there's sort of like two metrics I'll, I'll offer as the simple ones. One is, is there life in it? You know, when, if you dig into it, are there worms? You know, do, you think scurry, do you see things scurrying out of your way as you dig your hand into the soil? Um, there's, there's very little in the soil that can actually hurt you. Um, dirty as we might think it is, there's very little that can actually hurt us. And a life-filled soil tends to be a healthy soil. So if you dig into the soil and, and there's like nothing there, no, nothing living there, it's probably not in good shape. Um, and the soil in the yard behind me was that way when we bought our house. Now if you dig into the soil, like there's like you get a fistful of worms. It's great. Um, the other metric, uh, other than just looking for life, uh, is essentially the color of the soil. Uh, khaki-colored and gray-colored soils, really light-toned soils, don't have much organic matter. The darker the soil, the better. The soils that look more like chocolate cake than like khaki California beach sand are healthier soils. So, you know, you can roughly, and there's, there's 
scientific studies that have documented that you know the carbon content of darker colored soils is higher than lighter colored soils. You know, in the same climate, in the same region, with the same parent material, the same rocks that they came from. So you can get a loose feel for how healthy the soil is in your neighborhood by looking at the color of it. If you really want to get uh, much more formal and scientific about it, what you can do is take a sample of soil um, and basically put it in an oven overnight at about 100 degrees and basically combust all the organic matter in it. And if you weigh the soil beforehand and you weigh the soil after, that will tell you how much you lost, which tells you how much carbon was in it. Now, the problem is your parents might not want you to be burning soil in the oven. So yeah, I'm not recommending that, but you did ask what people could do to figure that out. And then for the record, I have not done that. I send soils off to a soil lab that does it for me. Um, but, you know, the simple ones are look for life and look for the color of the soil. But you want to also uh, be aware that different soils will be, form on different kinds of rocks. Um, and so you'll often see that different kinds of plants will grow in different kinds of soils. There's regions in California uh, where I grew up where you can identify the local geology just by looking to see what plants are growing in the native uh, plant communities on top of the land. Soils are an interesting window into the world of biology. Well, we'll have to go look outside for the chocolate cake in the soil <laughs> next time we go out. <laughs> but don't eat it. They don't eat it. Okay, that's a wrap on our conversation with Dr. David Montgomery about soil's role in both contributing to and solving the climate crisis, which brings us to, that's right, folks, you know what time it is, the Climate Justice Game Show! Remember, listeners, you can just pause the show and say the answer to a friend, write it down on a piece of paper, or just think it in your head. And we will be playing, as always, right alongside you. All right, Olivia. Question one. Why is the ground beneath our feet so important when thinking about the impacts of climate change? Yes. Thank you for asking this question, Sanaji. Well, so many people know that things like plants and trees actually help take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But less well-known is that healthy soil can actually also be a huge absorber of carbon dioxide like Dr. Montgomery discussed. And I didn't know this until I was in college. So if you're learning this now, you are way ahead of the game. Do you remember, Sanaji, when you learned that healthy soil is so important for balancing the carbon dioxide that's in our atmosphere? So actually, now that I think about it, I actually learned this um, late in high school, in my senior year, learned about mm. carbon sinks and how soils uh, are so helpful with carbon and with bringing all that that bad CO2 that's in the atmosphere from fossil fuels back down to earth. Uh, so that's when I learned. I also learned pretty late. So look at you all. You're all really early. <laughs> um, I feel like that is um, that teacher deserves a shout out for for teaching about those carbon sinks. Yes, shout out to to Miss Pags, <laughs> Miss Pagliaro <laughs> from my high school. <laughs> was it uh, was it AP Environmental Science? It's IB Biology, actually. Ah, Wild. that What's was that? that was my second guess. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, um, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> Bonus um, points. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay, okay, Sanashi. Question two for you. Maybe you also learned this in IB biology. Um, how do earthworms and other microbes contribute to the health of our soil and earth? Well, you know I love worms. So worms and other microbes contribute to the health of our soil and earth because they ingest plant matter. And through digestion, they merge mineral and organic matter to create fertilizer. Pretty wild, right? It's like a, a little biological factory creating fertilizer those worms and basically worms and microbes keep our soil healthy which allows it to absorb carbon dioxide and grow our food that is correct yes i think it is wild to think about how much we rely on things that we can't even see without a microscope absolutely third and final question what information can we infer from the soil's color uh, yes, this this goes back to that chocolate cake point. Um, not only a great 
snack, but a great indicator of soil health. So I remember Dr. Montgomery mentioned that light-toned soils are generally less healthy than darker soils that look like chocolate cake. And he even mentioned scientific studies that have documented that the carbon content of darker colored soils is higher than lighter colored soils found in the same region. Fascinating and correct. You got it, Olivia. So next time you see some chocolate colored soil, you can take comfort in knowing that it's taking some of our excess carbon dioxide out of our air and putting it back in the soil where it belongs. Yes. And with that, that concludes today's episode of the Climate Justice Game Show. Thanks as always for playing and see you next time. Thank you, listeners, for joining us today. And thanks to Dr. Montgomery for sharing his expertise on soil health. You can find more about Dr. Montgomery's work by visiting digtogrow.com. That's D-I-G, the number two, G-R-O-W.com. Or by checking out his band, Big Dirt. We will, as always, have a link in our show notes. 1.5 is written by me, Olivia Greenspan. And me, Zanaji Artis. Our show is edited and produced by Kat Petru with help from Matthew Winner and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory, and this show is brought to you by a kid's podcast about... This show is inspired by our book, A Kid's Book About Climate Change, and the millions of young people around the world fighting for their right to a livable future. You can write to us at listen at a kid's podcast about.com and check out other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting a kidsco.com. And we hope you enjoyed this last song by Big Dirt called Apologies Seven Generations in Advance. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcast at a kid's company about. We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at a kid's podcast about. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kids Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. Yeah.